Welcome to topic three of module four. So we look at the threat models that exist in the network and we have to protect the network from all the threats that are coming inside these models. Primarily, we have two types of threats. So we have active threats and passive threats. The passive threats are actually doing the attacks in a passive way. So for example, they are doing the port scanning or they are doing the internet wiretapping or they are using the man in the middle attack. For the active attacks that are part of the active threats actually, so breaches or spoofing, pivoting that are being done inside the network and denial of service attacks. Now, passive attacks are those attacks which do not initiate any communication with nodes in the network. So they don't interact with or modify the network data. Primarily, passive attacks are used for information gathering or recurrence activity. For example, if somebody is doing a port scanning and the, uh, the purpose is to see that whether a MongoDB instance is running in the network or not, so if they found an open port, which is 27017, then a likelihood is that a MongoDB instance is running on the network. Now, let's take a look at the first active attack, which is breaches. So any hole in the internal network's perimeter or act of an attacker exploiting such a hole to gain unauthorized access to the private system. They exploit network nodes and endpoints and try to find the vulnerability in the publicly accessible endpoints. So examples of breaches are buffer or heap overflows, SQL injection or cross-site scripting. So the active attacks are actually done on the private systems. And for example, we have remote buffer overflow attempts or uh, detecting the network level packet content for particular attack signatures and blocking the suspicious packets uh, into a sizable amount of time. Now, approaching the problem with the data science is to employ the machine learning for fuzzing matching or to help to change the game. So what we try to do is that we try to mine the pattern or we try to see any anomaly in the network in order to have the, uh, the uh, in order to prevent the breaches which are part of the active attacks. Now there could be breaches by the insiders and we can remove them with the help of role-based access control. Now, when we try to solve this problem by the data science is to, to view the insider threats as a classification or anomaly detection problem. And we have to look for inconsistencies in the access patterns to detect when a trusted user might be compromised. Spoofing is another active attack in which we try to spoof the identity of a party. Uh, for example, DNS spoofing and ARP spoofing, which is also known as cache poisoning. So the example of the DNS spoofing is that a network attacker, uh, attacker actually poisoned the client DNS cache by temporarily directing the client to an illegitimate DNS server. So the purpose is that you try to resolve your domain name uh, through, uh, through an illegitimate DNS server. So this way you will get an IP address, which is the IP of a malicious server. And then rather than communicating to a legitimate server, your system will be communicating with the illegitimate, uh, illegitimate server. And all you got this trouble through the DNS cache. There is a standard available called DNSSEC as well, which is not very widely used, but it prevents most of the DNS spoofing attacks. Another important active attack is the pivoting. So the attackers try to get the low hanging fruit in the network and then they pivot around the network. So they do is that uh, the technique of pivoting is moving between servers in the network. So when attacker get, get access to one system, they try to move around the network through pivoting. 
The infrastructures in which the boundaries are improperly designed or configured are particularly susceptible to such attacks. Similarly, we have another active attack, which is the most deadliest attack called denial of service attack. That is to make a machine or network resource unavailable to its intended user by disrupting the services. There are denial, distributed denial of service attacks as well, where multiple systems flood the bandwidth or resources of a target system. Botnet is one of the most crucial factor in performing de distributed denial of service attack. So the network of compromised computers infected with malicious software and they are actually used by the attacker to perform the distributed denial of service attack. So botnets are used for sending spams, performing click frauds or scrapping the web content for competition and also launching the distributed of denial, denial of service attack. Another attack in the distributed denial of service attack is the sync flooding. That is the attacker try to misuse the TCP handshake mechanism. However, this type of attack can easily be monitored with the help of pattern mining approach or with the help of anomaly detection if machine learning is employed. 